Hey Siri. Yes? How do you open up a trunk from the inside? Most vehicles are equipped with a safety release tab on the trunk interior. This is a green tab or lever behind one of the tail lights. Oh, thank the Lord. Playing thank the Lord. Gospel music. Today, we're looking at how to hit someone with a car in After Effects. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the actual finished clip itself. Uh, you can see we have a character standing in the road here, uh, and they're looking one way, and as they spin around to look the other way, they get impacted by this car, and they kind of travel along with the car uh, after it hits them. Clearly, no one was injured in the filming of this, and this was just a simple two-dimensional compositing trick that you can do right here in After Effects. We're going to break it down as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. So the first thing you're going to need, you're going to need to capture a clip that has essentially two parts. You're gonna want a clip that has someone sort of running into the road, right? And so you have this, this is kind of like the anticipation moment before impact. So you have the person standing in the road and now it's important to mention that uh, you want your camera to be locked off somehow. Ideally, you put it on a tripod. In this particular case, I actually didn't have a tripod with me. I had it uh, flying on the, uh, the Ronin S, but that has its own little stand. So I set that down on the ground. It's important to try to keep the frame as static as possible because what you're gonna do here is as soon as you record this footage of the person standing in the road, you're gonna have them clear the frame. And once they've cleared the frame, ideally you wanna get a car passing through the frame uh, from the direction that you want them to be hit. So in this particular case, I just kept the camera rolling and we waited a few moments and eventually a truck passed through the frame and that gave us the second half of the clip that we need. So just to reiterate, so you have the first part of the clip where the person's standing in the road, have them clear frame, and then you have the second part of the clip where the truck is passing through the frame. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to actually split your clip up at the moment of impact, right? So um, the way we ended up doing this for the film was that she essentially spins around and is impacted uh, almost directly after she completes that little rotation. So we want to find um, that ideal moment in the clip that we want the character to be hit. For us, it was somewhere around here. Let's say it's right there. And you want to go ahead and just add a, uh, a split in the clip there. So we can go over to Edit, Split Layer, and boom, we have the split. The next thing you're going to want to do is just scrub over to the moment where uh, the car is entering the frame. Uh, and hopefully you get it right around the time, um, sort of just before the impact, right? So maybe somewhere around here. And we can go ahead and just kind of get rid of um, this excess that we don't need. So we're gonna pull that part of the clip now toward the end of our other clip here. So what we wanna try to do is we wanna try to create the effect that um, the car and the character are occupying the same frame at the same time. So the way that we're going to do that is we're gonna scroll back here until, until we get our character in the middle of the frame and then we're gonna bring the truck in the middle of the frame as well. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and um, with that truck clip selected, you're gonna get the pen tool and you're just gonna quickly create a, uh, a mask that kind of like loosely goes out around the outside of the truck. And we'll go ahead and just include this shadow here on the road. Come back around and go. So we have the truck. Now if we, if we back this up a few frames, you'll see that the character is actually now occupying the same frame as the truck. So what we can do is we can go ahead and set a key on the path there to kind of save that position. We can add, uh, we can turn that mask off to get a better visibility on the, the mask itself. We can add a bit of feathering to kind of like create the illusion there that uh, the truck and her are indeed occupying the same frame at the same time. So if we track this backwards it now seems as if she is indeed in the road as the truck is approached but then the issue is that the mask sort of causes the the car to disappear and it kind of 
ruins the illusion that we have there. So what we want to do is this sort of secondary frame right at the moment of impact. We're going to go ahead and just key the mask expansion at zero pixels. And then we're going to scrub forward by one frame and we're going to expand these pixels out completely until we've covered that entire frame so that the mask is no longer having an effect. And now as we're scrubbing through it, you can see here that it does indeed look like the girl is in the road right up until the moment of impact. Um, and now at this point, she's sort of disappearing. But if we were to if we were to play that down, you can see that there is some believability in that her and the truck are actually occupying the frame at the same moment. So now uh, what we're missing is, you know, this kind of travel of the body across the front of the car right after that moment of impact. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and uh, let's close on this layer. Uh, we're going to go back to um, this kind of final frame, this final moment before the character disappears. Right. And what we're going to do is we're going to select that clip and right click it. And if you go to time, there's an option here to freeze on last frame. So what that's going to do is it's actually going to keep that final frame where the girl is standing in the middle of the road, basically there as a static image. So now that we've applied that, if we go and we just cut that layer in half, and then we're going to, you know, we can rename this. Uh, that way we remember what it is. Uh, you can just call it static image. Uh, we'll know that, okay, this is uh, the sort of static card of the girl. So what you're going to do now is you're going to want to cut out that static card so that we're not left with any of this unnecessary background. So with that static image layer selected, we're going to go to our pen tool and you're essentially going to want to just carefully cut the character out. Um, I will not bore you guys too much with this, so I'll probably go ahead uh, and speed it up in the edit. Essentially what we're going to do now is with the static image selected, um, you know, we now have this as its own card. So what you can do is you can actually, if you, you know, press the P key, you can adjust the position of this card in any way you want. And so you would be able to uh, theoretically kind of just animate the character along with the front of the car. But um, as we uh, saw in the example clip, we kind of have this character that she kind of like bends along with the hood uh, as she's kind of being taken along. So to create that effect, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go up here to this little uh, puppet pin tool and you're going to want to create three pins. So I'm going to put the first one uh, toward the top of the head, um, the middle one kind of like toward the hip line and then the bottom one in the feet. And what this is going to allow you to do is you're actually going to be able to um, select these little circles that have been created and you can actually uh, deform the character uh, from that point, right? And, and each point that you've created along the way is kind of like, it's like an anchored hinge. Um, so whichever one of these you grab, it kind of uh, is moving relative to those other anchor pins that you've placed. So essentially now what we want to do is we want to position this static card using those um, using the position tool and also those puppet pins that I was just showing you a moment ago. And we want to kind of like create the illusion that she is um, sort of positioned up over the top of this hood. So if you lose those pins, you can just go in and select this little puppet node and they will come back. Um, and so you can kind of, you know, position the character you can kind of position the character however you want. Um, you can kind of like stretch them out maybe for exaggerated effect. Not exactly sure how someone looks when, uh, when they've been hit by a car. But once you get them placed in relatively the right position, what you're going to do is you're going to keyframe the position of that static image layer. And you can do that by just hitting the stopwatch here. So now we've set a frame there. So now if we scrub through, we can see that we kind of go from this moment of her standing in front of the car to now being on the car's hood. 
And obviously this looks a bit strange when you're kind of going frame by frame here, but what we wanna do is as soon as she's up on the hood, we're just gonna one frame at a time, we're going to just adjust that position, keeping her roughly at the very front of the car. So if we scrub back through this, uh, and we'll go ahead and hide the mask there, you can see that the character is now traveling with the car. She gets hit, she travels. Now the reason that this is still looking a bit unnatural is that we don't have any motion blur on the character, right? And if you look at the car compared to her, the car has this like very natural looking motion blur around the edges because, you know, this is filmed uh, at 1 over 48 shutter speed. So you have a very naturalistic motion blur when you have a car that's moving at 60 miles an hour or whatever. So what we want to do is we want to take that static image layer and we're going to right click it. And if we go to effects, uh, blur, directional blur, we can actually add uh, a sort of, you know, fake illusion that uh, there is some blur being caused by the car impacting the girl. So you want the um, you want the direction to be roughly 90 degrees or so, right? In this particular case, we're seeing the car kind of in this profile uh, one point, and so uh, it's about 90 degrees to the camera. And then just adjust the blur length until it feels like it's matching the motion blur of the vehicle itself. Um, and this is really uh, to taste. I think that somewhere around there is probably about right. And so the way this ends up looking is she is completely sharp up until that moment of impact and then she kind of inherits the blur of the car. Now, once you've done that, that's pretty much the entire effect. And so what you can do is uh, you can export this um, for your grading and your sound effects and kind of like sprinkle that last bit of fairy dust on it. Uh, and it'll leave you with the final effect shot of a person being hit by a car. So I hope this tutorial incites some kind of outrageous scene in your next short film and that you guys learned something. Uh, if you have, let me know in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.